Is that what you do? It's just like, okay, let's go. Welcome. Let's go. You're the one who wanted the lights changed. Welcome to the Endless Honeymoon <laughs> Podcast. You're tuned in live from the doghouse. Johnny Pemberton is ooh, our ooh, guest. Ooh, 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 he just revealed ooh. after giving us, I would say, 15, how, what do you think, Natasha? 20 notes on our setup? <laughs> 15 minutes of notes. 15, 15 minutes of notes. 15 minutes of notes. He revealed that he's in the fucking doghouse. You're a married ooh, man, ooh, right? Ooh, ooh. Yeah, married man. And w- and you're and you're here to talk about dates that you're doing in Chicago. What weekend? Valentine's weekend. Uh, miss the mark much? Uh, uh, you know that's what? That's Valentine's Day, brother. Do yeah. it big before and do it bigger after <laughs> Valentine's. Skip it. How important? See, now I know your girlfriend, and right. I okay, wife. I guess I don't she know knows that as well. of girlfriend though. That's yeah, that is true. I've, that's I've known you guys known for other. like twenty years. Isn't that crazy? It really does is not make true? sense. You've known Natasha twenty years. Uh, not quite, but cl- very he, close to twenty years. He adopted one of Blanche's puppies. Right. Is that yeah. true? Before yes. I ever met you. Yes. Dang. But uh, my question is, Bree, right? Brit. Brit. That's okay. <laughs> Man, you guys are close. <laughs> it's been twenty years, but it's no. Been a but you know 20. what? But here's the thing: you've been getting that wrong consistently. Oh, that's so beautiful. That's, oh, that's actually, really beautiful. actually beautiful. You know, that Honestly, is a thing. Brit. <laughs> <laughs> Brit's kind of an awesome name. I'll never forget. It's a great it. name. It's I love it. Name. Is yeah. it short have, for anything? I believe all Brits are short for Brittany. Uh, Is yeah. that totally true? I mean, nothing's totally true as far as names goes, right? You know but, that uh, country Brit, right? Great Brit. Uh, oh yeah, great Great Brit. <laughs> you've oh, been to Great oh, Brit. I've been there. Yeah, oh, you've been to Great been, Brit. Oh, you know the man here, <laughs> double up clicky clangos. Oh, the big bang bucker, <laughs> snapping away this way. This is my mate here. It's a, it's a lad's night, isn't it? Did it, Brit? He is so good at accents. Oh, it, that well, we know about one. Yeah. No, I listen to you uh, on Duncan's podcast. You're right. so let's funny. Let's see you do. Um, let's uh, just let's see you do a Chinese one. Uh, <laughs> just go ahead, real Wait, quick. Chinese American or Chinese Chinese? Um, I would say whatever's going to get you in the most Taipei. trouble. Well, let's let's just get some. Let's get some other stuff. And then we'll, we'll make people <laughs> dig for the part they want to clip out. Wait, let's I have a question dig. though. How important? You know, if, if I had to guess, I would say Valentine's Day is important to Brit. Am I wrong? I don't think it is. No. Okay. She doesn't care at all that you're going. Uh, no, it really doesn't. I don't think so. How about you go on her birthday? <laughs> that would be different, but it's, there's always, been, I've been working a bunch of times where we couldn't celebrate things and you just would, do it a different time. Anniversary? Would you go do, do the road on an anniversary? Uh, I think I remember the anniversary better than she does most of the time. Yeah. I wow. really do. Do you bring your coffee in bed? I have. Yeah. You Every have day? like once or that's no, kind of your time, routine? all the time, but sometimes she doesn't want coffee in bed. Damn. Wow. I, man, I fucked up so hard. Yeah. You should have been with Johnny. No, because when I met Moshe, he had never right? had a girlfriend. That's not true. It is true. No, it's not. It he had true. had sex a lot, but you never like, had a girlfriend. I never no. had a girlfriend. No. No. So no I way. Was, it was up yeah. to me. This is your first relationship. <laughs> well, I, don't I would believe say that. I had like my thing was I had long term, long distance stuff. That's that's not a re- relationship. That's a I had relation. It's hard. To, okay. No, but it wasn't ever like uh, committed or what I could, yeah, exactly. But that's just fucking. I never the one had person. a person who I would mm. say this is my girlfriend. Blank. Wow, that's crazy. I never, I never said that. This is my girlfriend. Blank. Yeah, that's and he was thirty-eight when he met me. So yeah, but I had wow. some fun. But I will say, but so I didn't bring anybody coffee in bed because I was gone. No, but yeah. my point is, I could have told Moshe, listen, if you want to be with me, this is what this is what boyfriends do. If you they bring be you with me. This is what the boyfriend does. He better bring, bring me that the coffee. coffee. No, I, I'll go on stage and I'll ask the crowd, and it's like literally 50 50. 50 percent of the, it's a type of man. Fifty percent of the men wake up, bring their bitches coffee. Well, not every day. Well, not, like once I a week, co- maybe. I make coffee for Moshe every day. People drink but coffee every you get, day. You're the person who gets up first, right? Yeah. Okay, so that's just that's less of a thing about my about. Man. It's more about Dude, who gets man. up first. You think I want to get up first? No, you think you I want to pack a lunch it. and you can't help make it. breakfast? Yeah, it's yeah I can't help it because someone has to get up with the baby. <laughs> did you? Okay, okay let me, that's let, kind of it. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> let me let me ask you: Did you get up before me when we didn't have a child? Mostly, yeah. I rest my case. Because I think you and I, because I feel like all couples, you know, you you ever notice how your couples who are your friends who are couples, that the one couple is like one person, one couple is like the other person, sort of like, there's always like a duality. Like you and I are more alike. And I think you and Brit are more alike. Oh well, they're like I, I personality know Johnny, wise. You think me and you are alike? What what brings you to that? You, you're oh, saying we're like sort the of power a, people in the relationship. Oh my god! Well, just like I'm the one who gets up first in the relationship. At my in my relationship, you're the one who gets up first. I feel like 
I don't know. There's like you know how I mean like there's oh there's some like there's a there's a whirlwind and like a, a dynamic and a cleaner. Yes, exactly. There's <laughs> that like the, sounds bad. Right. There's really the mess sexist. maker and the mess but, cleaner. But Brit is more of the, the the whirlwind in your relationship. Sort of yes, but she's, she's a also mess maker. She's creative. Yes, and I'm, you're not. I'm not. And you're not. You're not a creative. <laughs> no, but guy. she's I'm like not creative. Yeah. She paints and like you know she's yeah, got she's like I can, I imagine her making a mess like with her art. Comedy comedians aren't like writing and like. You know, right. splattering. I do a thing because I write on a typewriter, and when I'm done with a page, I throw it behind me. Just like Murder She Wrote. <laughs> yes, you exactly. Just turn into like a bird and wrote. fly around. That's so cool. Uh, Jessica Tandy honestly is one of my main com- comedic inspirations. I thought she was she was the person you dated before. That's right. I, also, I was in, Jessica I was Tandy just, is not the person. Oh, in sorry. Murder. Wait, no, what's her name? Angela not Angela Lansbury. Lansbury. No, what's the the, the character's name? I th- yeah, you're right. Jessica Dandy is the actress it's in okay. Driving Miss Daisy. We don't have to know who this this character's. No, what's this her name? Jessica Fletcher. Oh, that's you shouldn't know that. I do know that, well, and I shouldn't. just knew it. It's true. Jessica Fletcher, right. Jessica Tandy. That's what happened for me. You writing that down? No, I just wanted to. Th- I, <laughs> well, I was thinking about you, Johnny. You're Promote so funny, dates. and you're one of the funniest people I know. I am one of the funniest people. A lot of people know I. But you're that. also, <laughs> you got a really kind of like dark. Oh, good. Dark view. I guess I do. Do I have a dark view? Dark view of what? Life, the world. Is that true? I would say, I guess so, yeah. You delve in conspiracy? Sure. I don't know if conspiracy is darkness. But what's your favorite? What's a conspiracy th- theory that you hard believe? Hard believe? None of them. Okay, or that you pretty hard believe. Hardest belief. God, I'm trying. It's kind of kind of blurs the lines because it's like, what is a conspiracy at that point? You know, I guess that like insurance is literally theft, maybe. <laughs> Like all insurance is, uh, insurance is theft. It's the greatest scheme we by man to defraud have, others. Oh my gosh, we have so much insurance. Everyone does because you have to. I mean, like thousands of dollars. You ever of watch TV? What are all the commercials? They're fucking insurance commercials. Why? Because they have no overhead. Because they don't pay anyone, so they have to spend all their fucking money on these super high priced commercials. Because they're just. But don't they have to eventually if someone sues you? No, they don't because they pay off federal judges. Have you ever gotten a payout? <laughs> <I do. laughs> I don't. I don't have it. I've never. Had, I've got like a car insurance sometimes, but they give you like you know you have to pay. It's just. It's How about a when scam. you buy it? When it's you a buy a, scam. When you buy a flight and they're like, "Do you want travel insurance?" Yeah. Like at least I know to not do that one. You know. Are they you won't, sure you don't want? They it? won't let you purchase a ticket. Are you sure you don't want it? <laughs> a lot of people have got this, and oh, I can tell you, Jason L. and Stephanie P. regretted clicking no. Well, also, like, my mom lives in Illinois, and she doesn't want to fly. And she's like, are you sure you want to fly? Have you looked at the news? And then she started yeah. sending me the articles, and it's like, you know, people dying on flights because of the cold, and it's only getting more. And what? like, Who's dying? I don't know. Nobody. Like, the Midwest yeah. is, like, cold it- right now. But she's just, it's, yeah. she's just become paranoid by, like, CNN. Well, it's all news. All news is just the paranoia machine, right? Wait. Hold on. Natasha, what about you? What's a conspiracy theory that you hard believe? The co- um, I believe that COVID was created oh, in a, a lab. A classic. <laughs> well, that's hold not, on, hold on, but not, not for con- gain of function, but for like warfare, like they're practicing how to like better. You know, oops. Do you you believe that? You think that it too? was a oops? I don't think it's a belief thing. I think it's a thing where you think it's a fact. Oh, I mean, I think they're practicing how to like how to how to. That there's no do, way it came from the animal kingdom. It came from a lab. There's no way it came from a pangolin. <laughs> well, well, what, what I think that I mean, there's a possibility, of course. Oh, I mean, all viruses come from mutations between animals. They don't co- all come from labs, or they wouldn't have had viruses before right. they invented labs. This oh, is true. Ooh. Professor, Professor Moshe's oh, in session. The teacher has become also a teacher. <laughs> uh, what's one you you don't believe in? Any no, much. I do, I do, I do, I do. Hold on, let me think here. I guess I believe. I, I want to. I, I nothing immediately jumps to mind, but I do kind of generally believe that after the '60s, there was a um, there was a marked movement to make sure that never happened again what and never happened the 60s the, the, oh the, 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 the lsd the, for sure the whole they, like, revolution of civil rights and lsd yeah. and the hippies and the yippies oh, and the yeah. black panthers that there was a, a a conscious effort to make sure that nothing like that ever happened again and and they, they, it was incredibly effective and they just yeah. gave us advertisement and capitalism oh. and and cookies and i think right now this in this current state we live in right now we're we see 10 times the amount of advertisements that people saw 
maybe even five years ago. Yeah. Oh, every time it's my daughter insane. goes to the nanny's house, she's they watch TV, mm-hmm. and she's always telling me about commercials for stuff. Yeah. Uh, I want to buy this. I want to buy that. And I'm like, how long were you watching TV? It's like she always gets ads. There's like a new house she wants. What was she telling me yesterday? She was like, oh, mom, there's this thing called blah, 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 where it teaches you how to read. I saw it on TV. Like, it's just like, uh, I mean, that actually That was me as a bad. kid, though. That was me for real. Yeah, me too. Watching TV I was like day. commercial, like, Dad, we got to get this car. We got to get this car, Dad. What about, you know, we got to get this thing, you know? Get this thing, but you're saying it's, it's cool. 10 more times than... Right now, like, we live, we're more advertised to than, we've, than humans have ever been in the history by, like, magnitudes, orders of magnitude. Like, if you, if you use, like, Lyft, the Lyft app, mm-hmm. you notice that lately, now when you use it, while you're waiting t- for your car... There's an ad inside the app. There's, oh, a lot, yeah. there's a lot of in inner app advertisements that happen now. Do you ever use Waze? I never use Waze. When you're what well, good. I don't use yeah. it either. She loves it. While you're on Waze. I just mm-hmm. love it when they say to go stop at Taco Bell. That's what I was gonna right. say. When you're on Waze, it will try to while you're driving <laughs> de- defer you to a Taco Bell nearby. Yeah, it'll come up in your map. It's insane. It's like, like it'll like kill a, that will kill you. Because right. you're like, oh, yeah, I love oh, cheesy gordita crunch. Ugh. And then you look and then you're dead. Johnny, do you think that um, there is cereals and stuff that's giving you cancer? Giving us cancer? Oh, I don't know. I mean, probably probably like it's uh, death by a thousand cuts, right? It doesn't help. Because mm-hmm. like, well, like, well, like Red 40, right? That's like a bombshell. Oh, you're a believer of Red, for- believer? Red 40? It's not, it's not a belief thing. It's a fact. I don't think that's true. I the think Red Forty is a is a is a is good. That's the dye. It's Certainly, a good thing. it isn't He's good. Just mad. That's what I, I think. Mean. It's n- banal. Mosh, I think Mosh it's neutral. Loves I think it's Takis and they use that in yeah. yeah so this is personal. Everything. So this is personal. I for like me. it too. I I'm a Red Forty boy. Yeah, a cherry <laughs> sours, anything. Slurpees. There's so many things where I'm eating it. Like, oh, this is so good. What's uh, good old Red Forties in it? That's why. Does it, it have a taste? No. no, it's got a red. It's got a red. You guys yeah. just, why don't they not make it red? Why don't they? Because true. when you eat something that's that red, your brain's like, ooh, this is going to be good. Yeah. When you eat it, your brain's like, it is good. So you get this <laughs> loop. It's like, oh, it's so good. Why is it good? Oh, it must be because it's red. I like I like a, a sour cherry ball a lot. You Ugh. wouldn't want to eat like nude sour cherry no. balls. No. Oh, like white ones? Yeah. Like Could you imagine raw? that? Eating Organic that sour like cherry balls. Apple <laughs> flavor that was like clear. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no. no. It's like, it's like bra- you know that brown sh- unprocessed sugar, like raw sugar? That's what I use but it's a, it's a raw cherry ball. It's just brown. Oh. <laughs> but it still tastes so good. Do you think it was really cool to be around in the 60s? Do you think yeah, you really felt cool. like something was going to change? Like when you say they never wanted that to happen again, like do you think like we're just too sedated now by our phones oh. to ever have any kind of revolution? A thousand percent. Although there is a mini revolution happening every day. The, di- the, the funny thing is that the technology that they use to keep us from rising up has now had this, uh, this secondary effect of yeah. making us so incredibly polarized that I think oh. a real revolution is more possible now than it was in the 60s. That's interesting. Because we don't share reality anymore the two right. sides of of the argument now think that they're in they're in alternate realities because they literally are seeing the different things right they I are saw in some video reality. about this recently a guy was saying how you know about this idea of um narrative collapse Mm-mm. a lot of people think there's, there's this thing happening now uh narrative collapse which has to do with lack of um being able to stay in the moment because we're <laughs> we're I thought, I thought I was laughing. Hold on a second. Let me let the dog in because I want to hear this. No, this is going to be bad. I can feel it. What, narrative collapse? collapse? No, narrative collapse is going to be good. Oh, the dog. It. Okay. The dog coming Johnny in Johnny likes the dog. He I love care. this dog. I'm just me? saying it's not going to be good for podcasting. I can feel it. I would. Okay, <laughs> narrative collapse. Right. Uh, I, I think I'm not very, very good at describing it because it's this guy, Douglas Rushkoff, wrote a book called, uh, what is it called? Future, it's called Present Shock or something like that. And this guy was commenting on it, saying how the problem uh, the problem now is that uh, we all live in individual reality, so there isn't like a collective cultural consensus. Like if you grew up in even the 70s in, in England, everyone's watching the same four right. channels. They're all watching BBC. So everyone in the same area, mm. they all have generally the same feelings this about really things. This is really interesting. And you're also, right. if you're like a punk... Your rejection is against something that everyone understands. It's, right. So Rejecting the same thing together. Rege- so it's like this thing where everyone, I ha- it means something to be people who are, are a culture. You live in the same place, so you understand each other. And now we all have individual experiences of uh, news and information. So we're so diffuse that we don't really have any kind of um, cohesion as a culture. I was just thinking about this actually recently because a big part of why we live in these individual realities is because of 
fake news. And I don't mean fake news like the broad term. I mean the, the, the specific term, which is like you can find an article that, was, that, is, yes. that is a lie. You can find anything you want to suit your personal thing. You can find anything. It'd hey, be the truth. Get down. He's not bothering me at he all. He is wet, though. It's kind of disgusting. I love it. I love he's a stinky wet, 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 wet dog. I, I truly love a stinky wet dog. No. Oh, you, <laughs> I really do. It's then that's kind of because like, of your algorithm. Oh, that's smell. part of your algorithm. No, but what I was saying is like fake news is a, a, a term for like an umbrella term for a phenomenon, but it's also a specific thing, which is an article that was written by a bad actor that is lying, yeah. right? So until this point, all, pretty much all the fake news you read is has been like, and I'm talking about literally an article that's that's spreading misinformation on purpose, right? Or, or maybe, the well, or maybe they're ideologically so altered that they think they're telling the truth, but it's not, right? Mm -hmm. Until this point, that's been written by a, a hu an angry human, right? right but like, now it's AI. but now that there's AI, right? Yeah. You can write an unlimited amount of fake news articles in in a in 10 minutes you could just say <gasps> write me 300 articles well that's about, where you get to the social dilemma right where right, right. it's <clears> like <throat> write me 300 articles about how you know covid was was created uh, specifically for urban warfare or and then write me 300 articles about how that's not true it's going to get to a oh point where those articles flood our information sphere so heavily that the um, you will not be able to trust sources at oh, all. It's anymore. already it's, too, it's already it's already close. I'm saying it's already bad. No one's I don't reading watch an anything. Article but anyway. it's it's already bad. But there are they, we still have things that you go depending on your ideology. You go well. I trust the New York Times or well. Yeah. I trust NPR or well. I trust uh, Fox News. Like you go to your source. It's going to get to the point where it's going to it's going to start to shrink to go well. I trust. Johnny Pemberton at and at NPR, yeah. and then it's going to get smaller. It's going to be like, well, I trust Johnny Pemberton, my friend, because the only person I can trust is an actual human being yeah. who's next to me. Because you will not be able to read, believe what you read anymore, or even what you see as a video, because uh, it's, it's, it's all. Gonna, totally. That's why I'm really excited about this next election cycle. I think it's oh, going to be, be awesome. just such a shit show <laughs> that I really am. I'm, I'm happy about it because I feel like it's it's beyond the pale now. It's just it's this thing where. We live in a, it's an absolute mayhem. And it's going to be whatever happens, no one's going to believe it. No one's going to well, believe what happens. Totally. It's going to be fucking insane. It's going to be crazy. It sounds at, awful. John. Were you at our election party? I don't know if I was. The one like back when Trump got elected? Yeah, yeah it was very funny. I think I was not. I, I felt heard like about you were it. here. It was very funny. We turned up the pool. We yeah. rented like four big screen. It was like liberal bubble. Like oh yeah, cognitive collapse. We had like, Mexican but this is caterers. Every, everyone did this. But this, was, but the the way we did it, we had Mexican caterers because we thought it would be funny. Because of Hillary, of, you know, haha, the wall. Oh like, right. Yeah. We were like it, everything. Was, we turned the pool up to, to like a, hot a hot tub, tub level. We were right. all like in, like burning carbon. And fuel. then we brought a TV. We had all these floaties, and then we brought a TV out to the pool, and everyone was like floating, watch eating their mini burritos, laughing until like Michigan won. Uh, <laughs> it, yeah, it was like an it was like an indie film of, of just like out of touch uh, and everyone just elite, got so upset just complete like but the, why are people excited about Trump who like he's obviously going to become a because he's hilarious he's fucking hilarious but here's the thing here's yes, the thing I don't true. know why we're getting super political but chaos is bad and fake <laughs> I don't think it's bad I think fake, we live in chaos no but that but the but we live in chaos with a Wizard of Oz like curtain on top of it right. that is the job did you ever see that hypernormalization documentary? Uh, I don't think I did. It's I really to. good. How and new I, is it? It's it's oh. it's like oh, probably. Really? Is it that guy that? that yeah, the, that weird British guy. The guy who talks like this. Yes. Yeah. Back in the oil rich Arabs in the 1960s, found a way to go outside. <laughs> That's exactly. And find the thing this to do. It's incredibly hard uh, to finish. He, uh, so Adam Curtis. Adam, Adam Curtis. Curtis. It, it's, I watched it's that. Really I watched dense. that. Yeah, but yeah. The, its premise is like the job of the of the government is not to maintain order. That's impossible. It's to project a an illusion of order. Right. That's good. Illusion of order yeah. is good I because mean, actually ripping through that veil of Maya or whatever and to where we realize how chaotic things are, that's where you get like, you know, bloodshed in the street. The, yeah. You, people be, opiates of the masses are, are kind of good. Well, there's also, I don't know if it's Thomas Jefferson or John Adams or one of those guys said. Um, Jessica Tandy, I think it Jessica, was. It was Jessica Tandy. That's yeah. who it was. Jessica mm -hmm. Tandy. Well, the character Jessica Kennedy was, was playing in uh, <laughs> Driving Miss Batteries Daisy. Not Included. Okay, right. Yeah. <laughs> yes. She said something to the effect of, uh, the whole idea of, like, we're not supposed to know about, we know too much about what's going on with the government. The idea is that you vote for someone who does that.
And right. we do, we do, it's like I our, do comedy. I'm a farmer. I do farming. It's like your the tax government person. Guys does, like, you don't yeah. want to know what's happening. Exactly. That's, that's like, good. You're but saying. now we're all super invested in politics. Right. Like, we're not supposed to be invested. It's supposed, because it's the thing, it's not our jobs to be invested in that. But they fucked it up so bad. They've stolen everyone's money to such an extreme degree. They went ham. They went ham on it. And yeah. now we got to, like, Call them and got to call the herd, but the herd is like, no, no, like, just desperately gripping to power. And, and you also have to like really s- study the news. They're like, unemployment's down, jobs are up. And they're like, isn't it great? It's like, mm-hmm. what? And, but then it's like, housing's at record highs. Yeah. Uh, food has never been high. Like, it's like, you still can't live. Well, like, they, they just broke it open recently. There's some article, God, I hate thinking about this stuff. It's so stupid, but basically just how. All the growth that happened in the last three years because of COVID, um, all of it, none of it got distributed whatsoever. It right. all went to the top. It stayed at the top. Stock buybacks. And this is... this Because they just, figured it out. Yeah. They figured out. Like, they just kept all the money. So no one has any fucking money anymore because all the companies that made all the money, they just kept it all. And they now they're all buying all their it. houses with each other in yeah. Idaho and Aspen and everything. Yeah. Catch this and more at the Den Theater in Chicago. Yes. Johnny Pemberton, the 14th through the 17th, right? Well, you know, yes. everyone's in a race to become the first trillionaire. That's that, basically what's right. happening right now. So it's And that's what I talk sad. about in my show. Minnesota reggae colostomy bag. <laughs> Is that the name of the show? That is the name of the show. Oh, it's, not, yeah. it's not my... It's Wait, my your stand-up one, show? You're doing a one-person show Yeah, it's a one-man show, yeah. Oh, I've been cool. working on it for a while, little while now, yeah. Cool, I want to see that. It's great. I, lo- I would love for you to see it. I you really are would. so smart. You're the first person to ever really talk to me about conspiracy theories. This is a very long time ago. So yeah, that's it was. Why I forever knew ago. That you were really smart, you know. That's your barometer? Is if somebody's a conspiracy theorist? <laughs> you're like, that person seems smart. Well, I, you know, I'm actually... But now I'm over them. So. I'm one of those people like I'm not as smart as some of the people I like, but I I can sense when someone's really smart. Well, Johnny is smart, and guess what else? What you are too, honey. I, I know, agree. I, I could, feel the same way though. I feel like I'm kind of smart, but I know I went to school with a lot of people who are much smarter than me, like way smarter than me. But also, like book smart isn't the same as like having your finger on the culture yeah. and like really understanding things and. Anyway. All right. Well, listen, let's take some of this wisdom, some yeah. of this smarts. And not only that, you're in a successful relationship with a beautiful woman. Yes. For Bri- going on 15 Bri- years. Brie herself. Brittany. Brickle. Brickleberry. <laughs> Wait, what have I called her before? I'm sure she's... Uh, Probably Brie, but that's fine because it's sort of the same name. No, it's not. It's just a shortened version of just without the T. Bruh. Bri- bruh. Bruh. That's what I call your wife. Bruh. What's bruh. up, bruh? What's up, bruh? Okay, oh, let's on, take bro. some of this wisdom that Johnny has, some let's of these smarts the and some of these relationship wow. skills and see what we can do for our callers. First caller tonight is Elizabeth, calling from this very city, Los Angeles, California. Hey, Josh. Yeah, Mosh. You know what my motto is? What's that? Always trust your gut. Hmm, what about today when you ordered six things for just me and you at the Chinese restaurant? Well, right now I can feel my gut. And yeah, that was a bad gut decision. Your (laughs) eyes are much bigger than your gut. gut. (laughs) Probiotics cannot help with most of your gut decisions, but if your gut needs a little support, Ritual's got your back. I love Ritual. I take it every day, and I really feel that gut health is important. Everyone's like, oh, it's trendy, but it's like, no, we're learning new things. Yeah, it's trendy to not be uh, bubbling in your gut. That's trending. Being healthy is trending. Ritual makes a three-in-one supplement with clinically supported prebiotics, probiotics, and a postbiotic to support a balanced gut microbiome. Postbiotics provide fuel to the cells that make up the gut lining to support a healthy gut barrier. That's what I want. I'm, actually, I wish I had had a healthy gut barrier before I went or six dishes at the Chinese restaurant. <laughs> the delayed release capsule is designed to help survive the harsh conditions of your upper GI tract. Now, I got to tell you, I've seen your upper GI tract, and it's nasty. Also, it's an all-in-one minty capsule that does not have to be refrigerated. Sometimes these vitamins that have to be refrigerated, then I forget about them, and then if I leave them out, then they go bad, and then I throw them away. It's kind of a nightmare. Ritual's done the work, too. They've invested in a study modeling the human colon. It was actually mine. I was the test sample, which showed Symbiotic Plus their product significantly increased microbial diversity and the growth of beneficial bacteria. That's all good stuff. They're vegan. They're non-GMO project certified. They're gluten and major allergen free. They're certified B Corp and they're made traceable. All this and more. Get that shame out your gut game. Symbiotic Plus and Ritual are here to celebrate. 
not hide your insides. Get 40% off your first month for a limited time at ritual.com slash honeymoon. This offer is only available through January 31st. Start Ritual or add Symbiotic Plus to your subscription today. That's ritual.com slash honeymoon for 40% off. It's not just these prebiotics and postbiotics, by the way. They've got a daily protein, a hydrocera, skin hydration, sleep bio series, melatonin, etc. They will deliver all of the supplements you need to your door with 40% off. That's ritual.com slash honeymoon for 40% off. Hi, Elizabeth. Hi. You've got a monster printer behind you. It is an impressive, <laughs> impressive That's a nice. Piece. Is that a 3D printer? That's a fat That's a piece. nice unit. No, oh, yeah. it's just a regular old-fashioned printer. You got a fat piece right there. I love it. Honestly, Thanks. that's how big printers are. Sick. Elizabeth, well, I Well, it's a... on top of a file cabinet. Exactly. Oh, okay. I thought it was like a big old old school kind of put your secretary no. on top of it, take a picture of her butt at the office party <laughs> style. Elizabeth, are you from the Midwest? I thought I heard that in there. Yeah, I'm from St. Paul, Minnesota. All oh, right. Wow. Have you heard of Minnesota reggae colostomy bag? <laughs> <laughs> the one man show by Johnny Pemberton? You should well, definitely I did. pick it up. I did Google Devno. you, so I think I saw something about that. Great. Yes, it's working. Yeah. It's a little <laughs> one. Google's working. <laughs> one person at a time. Um, Elizabeth, before we get started, I have a question for you. What is the conspiracy theory you believe the most? You know, um, I don't think I believe in any of them. Zero? None? I don't think so. You I think mean, we won the Vietnam like War? The, maybe Kennedy, Kennedy assassination. Okay, that's go. a, class, that's yeah, a good a one right there. Yeah, there you go. Are you sure you don't think that Michael Richards said the N-word at the Laugh Factory because they were trying to boost DVD sales for Seinfeld? <laughs> I have not heard that. Have I you heard that? That's cool. Is that something you've heard, <laughs> Natasha? <laughs> yeah, that's that's cool. a crazy, great conspiracy theory. <laughs> wow. That's wow. a good I'm one. Not, not heard that one. All right. Well, uh, that is a, I, I, love I know it. all I know is I didn't make it up. You got to get into uh, Talaria. What's it called? The the fake oh, whatever. That's anyway, P.S. I went back and watched the uh, Michael Richards N word video recently. What? What is wrong with every morning? It's, <laughs> 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 Let me just say it's it's considerably worse than you remember. It's really bad. It so, ain't good. Yeah. It, it's it, uncomfortable. It, it's pretty bad. All right, really Elizabeth, how can we help you? Okay, so um, I like I said, I'm from Minnesota. Uh, my parents live there. My brother lives there. I live in LA and I go back to visit like twice a year. My parents come here about twice a year. Um, and traditionally, since I moved out here, I've always stayed with them when I come home. Um, but as they get older, uh, it's getting more and more difficult. I also have a six-year-old daughter and a husband. And so staying there is just hard for a lot of different reasons. And the printer, you got to bring that too. And that's got to take <laughs> up some space. <laughs> um, and so I'm trying to figure out a way to tell them in a way that won't make them feel bad, particularly my mom, that I would rather stay at my brother's house. Um, he has two kids it would just be more relaxed, fun, but I know that that will make my mom feel bad. I don't think my dad will mind much. Um, and I'm trying to figure out a way to like make it so that it see so that it's okay for everybody, I guess, cuz I just really can't do it anymore. Is it because like your mom is too like high strung and kind of like hard to be around? They <laughs> they're both um extremely rigid um okay. inflexible i guess that's what rigid means um Riddle. they're really particular um they 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 like things in a very specific way um and there's there's also just like you know tensions that are always there it's hard when you move away and you like never see them and then you come home and mm -hmm. then you're with them 24 7 it's like it's really intense um, and with my brother, it's just, we don't have that, like, you know, underlying tension. Okay. Natasha, I got, I, I, I feel strongly about this one. I mean, this is just like, you have an only child. Yeah. Yeah. She wants to stay with her cousins. It's really important to you to create that environment for her. And, uh, you know, it's no it's, brainer. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. you struggle with the only child and. Maybe this isn't even true, but you can say this and just say like, you know, it's so important that she can wake up in the morning. They can all play with each other. We don't get to have that at home. I have to be your playmate. It's just, it's such a weight off of me, mom. And then, uh, you know, we can have coffee. We can go. They can be watched by the whole group. I mean, I have that situation. We have our friends who come stay with us and they have kids and it's like a vacation for me because 
then I'm not the only one waking up with her having to like be responsible for everything. You know why kids are so short, Elizabeth? No. Because it's easier to throw them under the bus. <laughs> so you blame your child. This is so simple. You blame your child. You say, oh, mom, you know, I'd love to stay with you, but... Little little Dixie, yeah. Little Dixie, she's that just been a cute name. She's adamant. Dixie. That it is would her not name, be a, actually. Are you kidding? No. Uh, yes. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> and like, it's shut for it the down. South, right? It's, this is my conspiracy. It's for the Confederacy, the, the right? You named yeah. her after the Confederacy. Uh-huh. No, you just say Dixie just insists she wants to spend the, the 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 break with her cousins, and and she's an only child. I can't say no, mom. But, you, yeah. I don't don't go into this like guilt thing. You go into this like the decision's been made. You go uh, okay. and, and, and you just deal with the guilt. The, the, she'll try to guilt you. But anytime you go into the like, I struggle because Dixie, you know, she I want her to be around her. <laughs> she'll say, well, doesn't she want to be around her grandma? You just say like the decision's already been made. And then you just deal with it. And it, this is the cool thing about this. I read this Dan Savage article once about this kind of same thing about an awkward staying with the situation. And he was saying you stay in a hotel, but the, in your case, you stay at your brother's house and it's awkward the first time you do it. And then every other time you do it, it's not uh, never awkward again. You get you just break through the barrier of guilt and then you're just like in in settled law. Johnny, thoughts? Uh, I, just, I have no guilt with anything with my family because I don't care what they think at all so i feel like <laughs> i really don't I, I how did you get there are you close I, with them no, clearly not no but i also just it's like you know you, what you how you feel is the most important thing and it doesn't matter if your parents feel they could they they're could, lucky you're going to visit them yeah I, I i think that they they can't actually feel that bad about it and if they do that's on them because it's it's your priority to Are to be happy. Are you a monster, Johnny? <laughs> that's not a monster. That's no, more I like know. you know you have to take care of yourself and take care of your kid. And if going home to stay with your parents is is a, not a pleasant experience, like I always have to cut my trip short because I can't handle being home for. I can't be home for a week. I'll lose my fucking mind. Yeah. So I have to just be like, well, it's not pleasant, but I I have to prioritize my. I'm the most important person first, and then everyone else after that is second. So, that's really but healthy, that's, but you have to do that. Just you can't like be beholden to them because they'll they'll drag you every. It'll get, it'll get worse every year. It gets yeah. so much worse because like older people get, they get more like, why are you doing this thing? It's like, why well, you know? It just gets bad. Yeah, but blame your kid. I mean, it's just this is yeah. why we had them. This is why you have a child. It's to be able to push responsibility onto the child that's why you flake on people when you actually don't want to go to dinner but you go oh we had a rough time with dixie tonight and you're just out you're absolved that's the point of having children and then when they get old enough you enlist them in physical labor that's the only reason people have children an excuse to flake and then when they get old enough up someone to dust listen you can do it you just have to do it you want it you're calling an advice podcast like that's how annoying they are do they email Oh, you muted again. Though you have the Wayne Brady mic, you've become muted again. That's a Wayne Brady mic? Yeah, she's got like a little headset. Uh Uh-oh. Uh-oh. This is bad. It's on your end. Elizabeth. The advice has been given. Yeah, let's move on. It is good. Good advice. We love you, Elizabeth. And do it. There's never a good time to do a bad thing. Minnesota. What I was going to say is email. If you're too scared to have the conversation, send the email. Hey, mom, dad, just wanted to let you know, this is good language, let you know that we've decided, it's happened in the past, that we're going to stay with Brother Brian this time. Uh, unfor- we'd love to stay with you, of course, but little Dixie insists she wants to stay with her cousins, and so that's what we're going to do this year. But we'll be there all the time, having ham, or whatever it is people do on Christmas. I love you much. Bye-bye. Like, it's not a conversation. It's an announcement. Yeah, she should be lucky that she has a daughter like you. I might not even say decided. I would say it's unfortunate, but you know we just have to stay. We have to stay over there. I, I okay, either one. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, goodbye. Good luck. Honey. We love you. Goodbye. Bye, Elizabeth. Merry Christmas. Minnesota. That was so interesting that the CIA, the minute she said the Kennedy thing, just <laughs> muted her. <laughs> they muted it immediately. They're like, we What's can't the, have the her. The CIA is using AI now to censor <laughs> stuff. CIA AI. Yeah, the CIA AI. The CIA AI. All right. Um, well, should we listen to some secrets? Yeah. Honey? Johnny, we have people call in and leave secrets on our secrets I love hotline. It. Okay. And we thought you'd love them. I love secrets. What's love your it. deepest, darkest one? One Don't. that you've never told anybody before? Uh, it's. Uh, 
I like the secrets hotline because I feel like pretty much every human being has something that they just don't tell people. And I, I know. Yeah. It's you don't you've told everybody everything. Mm-hmm. everything. I, mean, I don't have any big dark secrets. I don't. They don't have to be dark. I'm just saying like a memory that's shameful, a thing you don't like talking about. Everybody's yeah. got some oh, little yeah, little that's thing. That's what you got a confession for. Oh uh, yeah. Were you Were raised you Catholic? Catholic? Yeah. Oh. It's all a Minnesota reggae colostomy bag. Talk about it a lot. <laughs> Where could I see M- Minnesota reggae colostomy bag if I was in the Midwest? In Chicago Where? at the Dent Theater. When? Uh, from February 14th through 17th. But that's Valentine's Day. Well, you know what? Maybe you have to catch me uh, when I do it in New York eventually or mm-hmm. uh, other places that will be on my website, johnnypemberton.dog. <laughs> 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 which is actually my website. It's is that a, right? Yes, yeah, it's not a joke. It's, dog. It really Go to johnnypemberton.dog. If you're in yeah. the Chicago land area, may I recommend the blistering one man show, blistering. Minnesota Reggae? Are we ready? Yeah. All right, that's the end of that plug. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right, let's hear some secrets. Every time I go to the Alamo Draft House movie theater, I steal the menu. I have 14 menus. <laughs> And I don't want any help. I love doing it. Why? Wow, that's a pretty bold one there. Ooh. <laughs> you imagine if you got caught, they'd be like, oh, mm, that's fine. <laughs> uh, do you he's want like, some more? He's like, no, but I've got 14. He's <laughs> like, man, that's good. Uh, do you want 100? <laughs> Here you go. Take them. It's almost like that is what someone does who like want, they want to do something wrong. Like, right. Yeah. They want to sin, it's, but it's they're not rebellion. comfortable with real sin. But it's I'm not comfortable with, like stabbing someone. Mm. It's a sad I always stab somebody with a very small knife when I'm in line at Target. Do you think you could <laughs> stab someone um, if you were angry enough? You know, here's no. something crazy I learned. So when I was in uh, South Africa a couple years ago, I was working on that movie. And uh, what movie? Yeah, what it was mean this that movie? movie? Oh, it was a movie uh, called Action Point. Um, I was working on this movie. That I was there for a long time, and uh, there was a woman who worked on the movie who was South African. And I was saying how I wanted to get a knife to protect myself because it's very dangerous there. Really? And, yes, for real. And it's very dangerous in Cape Town. She was like, "You shouldn't get a. You shouldn't get a, a knife. You should get a um, like a baton." And I was like, "Why?" She, and she she honestly reminded me of you. She's the same size as you. Very similar personality. <laughs> very like you know, small bubbly woman. Okay. You are a small bubbly small woman. bubbly woman. And she says in her perfect Afrikaans accent, "Do it to get a club, not a knife." Because she's like, "Have you ever stabbed someone?" I'm like, "No." She's like. But have you ever hit someone? I'm like, yeah. So it's like, and when push comes to shove, right. you're more likely to strike someone with a stick than you are to stab someone. So you're uh, supposed to walk around with a club? Yes. <laughs> I. But a, a knife well, you can you hide. One? I got what Pontius, Chris Pontius bought me an extendable baton that I still have. And did you ever have to use it? No. I was at a show <laughs> on Saturday, yeah. speaking of South Africa. I was at a show on Saturday and I was asking the crowd, what's your biggest fear? Yeah. Uh, and like this, during your set or how during my set I okay. do this show I also have a show I believe uh, that you're a great it, comedian as well thank you very much uh, <laughs> but it's not a one man show I have a anyway I've been doing this thing called the wheel of crowd work it's like okay. a wheel of fortune oh, that sounds fun it's super fun and, yeah. it, uh, and I basically I bring a wheel of fortune on stage and I spin it and then it lands on a prompt and then if right. somebody in the audience has one and one of them is your biggest fear and this woman spoke up and she goes my my biggest fear is being devoured by a shark. And I and I began to make fun of her. Like a thick New Jersey accent? No, like Charlie bit my finger. Like devoured by a shark. I will get devoured by a shark. And I started to make fun of her. And then I remembered a lesson I learned very early in comedy is never make fun of a person uh, who's talking funny because you don't know if they're, if it's cute or if they're, if you're being able you don't know you have no you just idea. don't know and so i pan- i started to panic mm-hmm. it was fun but then she said something else and i was like wait i was i had this flood of relief because she said something else and she had an accent i go wait where are you from and she said south africa and i said oh thank god this was an afrikaans thing not a speech impediment nor a little baby and it, it is w- a cool accent. Will you do it, it for us, Johnny? Since can I don't know if I can do it, I think I can it's maybe hard. do like a, a really one. bad version. I've of heard it. it's the hardest of the uh, of like, the English speaking accents bro, to do. It's fucking lucky here, crazy bro. That's good. We're going all the way to Durban for a fucking party. It's going to be a braai. That's good. You want it's me? To I don't even know what you said. We're going to Durban for a braai. I can a do a really good one. It's like a barbecue. You, I can do a really but good that's one. Like, You're not good at that's accents. That's a bad. That's a bad one. You want? I can do a good one. I can't do it. Do you want me to do it? Yes or no? No, I wanted to. Keep hearing Johnny. <laughs> Johnny did it. Now it's my turn. Do you want me to okay, hear it? Okay, fine, honey. You do it. I'm a ninja. <laughs> That's cool, right? I got it, right? Right. You that got was it. crazy, right? You guys were 
Do you have goosebumps? Yo no te viser. Ay, ay, ay. What about that? I That's pretty good. I wish they would no, come out I, with a new album. They, oh. have a new, they have something pretty new as of last year. Oh, I, I haven't really checked it out. Oh, it's good. It's good. <laughs> what's All it right. called? I can't remember. Let's called. play another secret. Wait, 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 but what's the name of that band? Ay, ay, ay. ay de de Antwerp. De Antwerp. De Antwerp. De, de, de Antwerp. They're cool. That'd be so cool if we all spoke Afrikaans. That cool. would be cool. That's Aren't the they? coolest language ever. Really? Afrikaans? Afrikaans, yeah. Isn't yeah, it like a legacy of like... I am a boer. Isn't that what they're called? Boers? Boer, yeah. The boers. Boers. Aren't they like... Isn't that a weird legacy? I don't think it is, actually. I, I don't think, think there are people that... The Afrikaans? The Afrikaners are not... They're like the seven foot are. tall they white are the, people, they're right? They're the Dutch farmers that took over Rhodesia and South Africa. There's all kinds of Afrikaners... I think, uh, I don't know. I know enough to know not to say anymore. Well, like, I don't. Honestly, I don't, know, I don't know the full story. It's incredibly complicated. Like, it's really complicated. I don't think thing. things are complicated. I think everything's no, black and white. My, and just check out TikTok. My algorithm tell is you telling that. me that nothing is complicated. <laughs> I just really? found this out. Yeah, nothing is complicated. And everybody is. And uh, statistics don't lie. Yep. And numbers don't lie. Numbers statistics don't lie. Statistics don't lie. This is like stand and deliver. <laughs> <laughs> a great movie. Oh, that's such a good movie. So good. Check it out. Truly a great movie. All right, Here's what I recommend if you're in the Chicago land area. <laughs> Watch Stand and Deliver. It's free right now, I believe, on Amazon Prime. Is it? When you're done with that, go on down to the Den Theater and watch Minnesota Reggae Colostomy Bags. Yes. And let's hear another scene. Then go back on Amazon Prime in April and watch Fallout. And then, are you in that? Yeah. And then fly to South Africa and do a screening of Match 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 Point? No, that's a movie about the golf, Action I think. Point. It's not Action a South Point. African movie, though. It's like a... We just filmed it there. All right, here we go. Hey, Tasha. Hey, Moshe. Um, okay. I just want to first of all say that uh, I just kind of recently found out about your podcast. I've been a fan of both of yours, actually, since, I believe, before you were ever together. Oh, anyway, uh, kind of a comedy nerd. Well, uh, no, but the podcast. I got into the podcast and... I've been listening to the, uh, I really like the secret spots, and I was thinking about if I have any secrets, and there's only one that really came to mind, which I think you might find uh, interesting, if not funny, maybe a little funny, now that it's been 25 years. Anyway, so my mother had a cat that she had for like six years before I was even born, Um and anyway, long story short, one day, me and my uh, dumbass friends were sitting around, we're smoking pot when I was about 13 years old, and uh, a cat was hanging out, and the cat was uh, about 19, maybe even 20 at the time. And, uh, you know, as you do, I'd never done this before, didn't have done it since, but it kind of scared me from it anyway. And we blew a couple of hits of pot smoke in the cat's face. And, well, um, yeah, the next day it died. <laughs> so I always kind of live with this. Jesus. Uh, if I killed it or not, it could have just been pure coincidence. I really have never heard of marijuana flat out killing a living thing before. I really don't know <laughs> oh. if that's possible. But I guess it is. And I never really knew. And uh, I never told my mom, for obvious reasons, because it was an old cat, and there was no reason to. But, um, yeah, but we kind of carried that with me, just uh, wondering if if uh, if that did kill the cat, or if he was going to die that day anyhow. Anyway, well... Okay. <laughs> Let's go ahead and wrap it up. I told them about it. So <laughs> is there more? Is there more we should hear? I don't know. Oh, Wait, that was long. It was long. That I guy. mean, the, a twenty-year-old cat is obviously hanging on by a thread. So yeah, and that thread is uh, made of marijuana smoke. I, well, I gotta say that story zigged when I thought it would zag. Like the beginning of the story, there was a lot of emotional ups and downs because at the beginning of the story, I was like, "Oh my god, he killed the cat." And then he started talking about pot, and I was like, oh, this isn't a good story. He just got the cat high. And then I was like, oh, my God, he killed the cat with marijuana. Yeah. I could not have seen that coming. Ugh. What do you think? Did you think it kill, he, you could kill a... I uh, think it probably did, but probably. Not, it was 
Probably the cat was probably just so close. It was like almost dusk. Because who knows? It maybe just raised its blood pressure or some weird thing. Who I'll knows? never forget when we did the show. We used to do a show at the Hollywood Forever Cemetery, and this woman would come holding a pillow with what looked like a taxidermy dog that she said was alive. Really? And it was and, dead? No, I mean, I it don't was... I remember that. It didn't look... She was just always in the audience, but she would travel everywhere with this pillow. But the dog, it was like 24. And she was like, yeah, it's alive. <sighs> but it was just like, it had like one eyeball and like, it was like... Ha- yeah. And I think you can keep things alive, but yeah, maybe... There were these twins in Oakland, I remember, that we used to go get high at their house and they had a cat that was tw- something like 24 mm-hmm. and it was blind, deaf, and couldn't move. It That's what this one It couldn't was walk. Like. The only so way cool. you'd know it was alive is if you would poke it and it would <laughs> meow and it would go, okay, it's still alive and I oh guess it would eat. Oh my God. That's crazy how long stuff can hang on. Do you... Like that shape. Do you... um, Like you were saying, me first, like how do you feel about like, if you have a pet? I had a pet, yeah. Would you do Honey, heavy? Honey, he already said his yeah. dog just died. Oh, Don't I bring didn't, it up again. Just died. No, I think do you were out of the room. Do you do he- have, did you do heavy medical intervention on the dog? What do you think about... Because I sometimes oh, wonder you, how much we should do... Oh, this is a very good question because it's uh, it was really hard. Yeah, we had to make a decision. You texted me about the I hospital. I you remember helped, now. You helped Sorry. me a lot. Yeah. Uh, we found out that uh, we could have had surgery... But she was a big dog. She's 85 pounds. And so big, you know, bigger dogs, yeah. that stuff is so hard on them to where it is a thing. There's a lot of uh, certain heart surgeries and stuff they don't do on dogs anymore for that reason because they realize that this is not for the animal. This right. is for right. the people. Because uh, really? I always think about it like this. Okay, if you're a dog and like if I have surgery, which I talk a lot about in Minnesota regular colostomy bag because I have my colon removed, right? You know? uh-huh. So we know, when you Your have surgery. whole colon? Yeah, this was 20 years ago though. Um, when you have by surgery, a doctor or just on oh, the street? It's a guy named Greg. Oh, Greg! Super I know Greg. Cool. He's great. I can you tell him to call me? I'm trying to get hold of him. <laughs> yeah, we're in touch. Yeah, but uh, if you if you have a person has surgery, you know, you know, when you wake up from it, you know, like the pain. You're in pain, but you know, oh, it's part of this thing. I'm right. gonna I'm gonna feel better. Right. You have a conception of time, and you know what's going on. If a dog has surgery. When it wakes up, it feels terrible. It's like it doesn't know this right. is for the best. It just feels like terrible, and it, could, and like, it could die during surgery could die when it during could have surgery. died in like a more peaceful situation. Exactly, I would go All even further than we're that. Propping up the animal for us. Yeah. I would go even further. I totally agree, yeah. and I would go even further. The only reason that we bother with incredibly intrusive surgery, especially in old age is because we are humans and are aware that we're going to die and we have, we're anxious about that. Yeah. Like we want to live. So for us, it's worth it because for us humans, we go, yes, I'll be in unbelievable amounts of pain, but I don't want to die. I want to live. I'm scared yeah. of, of, of being obliterated. The dog doesn't have that same existential No, angst. they don't feel that at all. Yeah, they're just like alive. and the, I mean, obviously they have a will to live, but they're not, yeah. not a fear to die. No, they don't know the difference between like an hour and 20 days. Right. Yeah, so I think it's like a not a good thing to put... The animal through that. I'm I'm with that. And they also they won't they literally will not will not do those surgeries now for that reason. On big dogs. On I think a lot of dogs. It depends on what the th- what the condition is. But our dog had what's called a hemangiocarcinoma, which is like a really big heart tumor. So they have to do all this. It's it's a little convoluted. But, I'm sure you, know. you can find a vet yeah. well, that will charge you five thousand right, dollars. Totally. Sure, you could. Or Greg, you call Greg. Call Greg if I could get a hold of his right. number. That was why you're trying to contact number, him. So, yeah, all right, shall rough. we do one more call and then we will call? Or Laura, do you have a secret that you think is good? Hmm. Okay, then let's do another call. I almost I almost killed my mom's dog. I thought with weed once. Oh, a couple really? Years ago. Yeah. Well, Pablo loved weed. We always blew it in his face. It made oh, him was, actually. There is no weed. I, I did. Yeah. <laughs> I would blow it in his ear. There is no we. <laughs> no, I, I don't smoke. <laughs> I know. There is no we. I don't smoke. There's, there's definitely only. But yeah, Pablo was a very neurotic dog. Uh-huh. And did you ever meet him? He was I my don't know little if I dog. Did. Anyway, he was a, met, he was a mess twice, and yeah. difficult. But he, Pot would help him calm down a little bit. And I was I supported Natasha blowing the weed smoke in her ear. All right. Hey Tosh. Yeah, Mosh. I'm going on the road with my little book tour, and guess what bag I'm packing? Well, I hope it's not the base bag, because I'm taking that when I go to Sacramento. We've all been there, trying to fit everything we think we might need for a trip, only to end up with a suitcase that's like busting at the seam, but with base. There's room for everything. This thing is so slick looking, by the way. Sometimes we get these products and you go, oh, okay. I would call it chic. Yeah, we got this one, we were like, oh, okay. 
You could pair 15, you could pack 15 pairs of underwear for a weekend trip, no problem. A bunch of pants, no problem. Decide in between a few pairs of shoes, they've got like a special little extra compartment for your shoes. It's fashionable luggage that also is like big enough that you could take it as your carry on, but you can also put it on top of your suitcase. I mean, it looks so good. It I looks love a, it. It looks a bit like a purse, but it's also not feminine enough that a man would be like, I'm not carrying that thing. It kind of does it all. It's thought of everything that you could want in a piece of luggage. There's 360 degree gliding wheels, a cushioned handle, a built-in weight indicator. They include washable bags for your dirty clothes, all the interior pockets you might need to keep organized. It's awesome. Base was created by an actress and model, so I really relate to it. Um, the actress part, not the model. I relate to the model part because I've dated so many. Yes, that's right. This thing, believe it or not, it was created by Shea Mitchell. That's right. None other than old Shea Mitchell creating the best bag I've ever had. Well, she was looking for ways to make travel a breeze. That's why she created Base, the perfect luggage that's fashionable and functional. I have to say, we got a black one. We got a cream one. I cannot tell which one is cuter. They are, I mean, I like black because I'm pretty hard on things. The cream one is so chic. It's made from canvas. It looks like you're about to go on safari. I love it. And you know, I am a picky bitch. You are. You're a snob. And you looked at this bag and said, that's for me. If you're going on safari or going on a weekend trip, get a base bag. Right now, Base is offering our listeners 15% off your first purchase by visiting basetravel.com slash honeymoon. By the way, don't take our word for it. Go to the website and take a look at them. They're so awesome. And let me just say Base is spelled B-E-I-S, but it sounds like base, okay? Get sophisticated. Go to base travel. Go to base travel dot com slash honeymoon for fifteen percent off your first purchase. That's b e i s travel dot com slash honeymoon. All right, we Ooh. are going to call Ben and Amanda a couple on in NorCal, Northern California. <laughs> Where do you think that is? North well, Cal? I think they're Actually, being they're vague on purpose. I think they're being vague on purpose. Isn't okay. that funny? How everyone's like, they don't want people to know stuff now. You know well, what I mean? Well, it's always funny to me that people don't want you to know stuff and then they are on video. What's up? Hello. How Hi, are you? Bamanda. Bamanda. <laughs> Hi, Bamanda. That's a kind of elegant Natasha. bed. Hell yeah. Thank oh, you. Thank you. It's really beautiful. Yeah, that was a score. That was like 400 bucks. Yeah, wow. it was from a uh, it was a seventies time capsule house. Oh, cool! It definitely has yeah. that vibe. Can I make a recommendation? Oh, I know what you're going to say, Natasha. Wow, getting started already. Yeah, well, well, I think it would be cool to paint it. the back wall a color because oh. that bed is so amazing. Like you could paint it like a salmon color, or maybe like even like a light lavender. I don't know, something like just to kind of like make, make it, it pop. pop. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Our bedroom hasn't had any like. It's no been, attention. No attention. Yeah, okay. it's been the last sort of thing. I was thinking some sort of cool wallpaper. I agree, oh, I wallpaper. It. Well, love wallpaper it. is a whole thing, though. I mean, paint is so easy. You could do it in a weekend. That, that yeah, was that's... All right, so how can we help you? All right. Thank you guys for, for taking our call. Um, so we um, we got together, like, what was it, like 13 years ago now? Mm -hmm. San Francisco. Uh, you know, basically we're the toast, we're the toast of town, you know, <laughs> sure, I remember you from back then. You guys were, uh, we, yeah, we all knew who you were. Yeah. It was like a party every night, you know, we were, we were living it up and that was like seven years of doing that. Uh, then we got married, we got, uh, pregnant, had a baby. And so we got out of the town and now we live in a small town up in the hills. Mm -hmm. And, you know, life's really different. And uh, he's almost seven. He's uh, got ADHD, super hyperactive and just kind of always bouncing off the walls, bouncing off the furniture. Um, only child vibes. Only yeah. child vibes. Like, <laughs> like we're kind of, you know, here to serve him. And every 10 minutes when we walk by, he wants another snack. It's got to be crunchy and good. I'll say right now, military. Yeah, I would agree. <laughs> I would agree. He needs to go into the military. Military, yeah. there you go. Uh, next call. <laughs> we hang up. Perfect. Uh, Navy, Navy, definitely Navy. <laughs> well, thanks for taking our call. Yeah, uh, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, go ahead. so he's... Uh, he, he, I, go ahead. He has sensory things. He wants like crunchy snacks. How's he doing in school? Not good. Yeah, Not okay. Good. 
Not good. It's public school and they try so much harder than they ever would in like my generation or, you know. He has a team. He has a team oh, working on it. Yeah. They're great, I had a but they still team. suggest like they still suggest like, oh, maybe homeschool will be better. Uh-huh. Um, you know, they kind of suggesting that maybe he isn't, you know, cut out for their school. Uh, he's in the principal's office a couple of times a week. He's kind of what kind of stuff know, does he do? Can you tell me an how, example? Well, how old is he? He's seven. 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 So he's like wow. in first grade. Yeah, Mm -hmm. he's a first grader. So he is uh, disruptive. He's a class clown. He shouts out. He, um, they call it being unsafe with his body. He like flails and lashes Mm. out and um, is doesn't have a lot of spatial awareness. He um, is not good at just like sitting at his desk and doing work. He loses interest really quickly in anything that's not like his interest. It's all like classic ADHD. And he also just like, Wants to make everybody laugh. Mm. All Sounding the time. kind of familiar. Mm. This is like Thank you. this is yeah, my childhood. So, a team yeah. in the principal's office trying when to. When you were in every- first grade? Pretty close to that time, mm. yeah. Have you tried nighttime gummies? That is what is yes. that? <laughs> Yes, he he is. He has a counselor who comes to his school weekly um, and spends time with him. He, like I said, he has a team of people that he's able to like take breaks and like have resets. Um, School is very supportive. His teacher, but the other people are great. And then he he does take medication as well. Um, But it has medication help. Medium low help. Yeah. yeah they, not really. They, then maybe take him, him on, off the medication if it's not helping. Well, they got him on the stimulants first. That's kind yeah. of your first line thing to do. And that just, he just acts like a guy on stimulants. Uh huh. So um, not like the opposite. A lot of times it's the opposite. Yeah, right? That's what they say. <laughs> but all I ever op- did was crush him up and snort him. And <laughs> it, it was a lot of fun. Moshe yeah. do- is on a second novel or a second book, so you know. I know. Okay, so what uh, what is the dilemma that you are trying to solve here? I mean, ob- obviously we're, we're a little underqualified here because you guys are you're more right. experts than we are. Obviously, you're deep in the game. Yeah. Well, the reason I thought of you guys is because you're busy, and so we're busy. We're busy taking care of him. We're busy with our own businesses. And it's just like, how do you find time to like, Mm. and the energy to have still that, you know, romantic party lifestyle and maybe not the party, but, you know, just like have some one-on-one time sometimes. Oh, God. He comes running in to interrupt us whenever we talk, no matter what room we're in. You know, oh, they're talking. I'm going to go like completely derail them. I mean, what happens when you're like, no, go. I mean, Moshe will like literally yell at our kid and be like, I don't yell at our kid. Uh, Certainly not for the podcast. (laughs) No, but I mean, he'll be like, we're talking. That was rude. I don't want you to ever do that again. Every time you do, I tell you not to do something and you do it again, that makes me very angry. And if you do it again, you're going into the bedroom. Like, are you guys like, you're like permissive parents? Yes. You don't say things like that? No, no, we do. We do. We set boundaries um, and he still does it. Mm. And I think the bigger issue is too, that we don't have a large circle. We have us two. We have a grandma nearby that is aloof and not responsible enough to really babysit him a lot. She's not going to be driving. She's not going to be driving. Yeah. Like he's never been in her car. Like it's not that kind of relationship. And then I have a sister and her boyfriend who are great and they've offered a million times to watch him. But anytime that it comes up, they're like, Oh, we're actually busy. We're unavailable. So we don't have anybody to watch our child who also, I mean, I want to say special needs, but he is a lot. He is a handful. We don't have people in our circle who can watch him so that we can have a date night. Really? Well, this, and I, I mean, think what, that's, I feel like you're missing a giant industry here. There are these things called babysitters. I know. And I know. you can just hire them and they mm. will come and you can get them when, with experience with kids like yours. It's not like you got to have a teenager with a, who just quit her paper out. You could get somebody. Can who, you get out of the public school system? I don't know. Is we there, don't have out of the public system money. Well, what about we like could, a Waldorf I, school? They're not that expensive. He's in a charter school right now, which is not quite as like it. They're They're pretty helpful as much as they can be. But um, you might not have private school money, but I'm gonna go ahead and guarantee you got Thursday night babysitter money. <laughs> I why not? I was nervous about it. 
you know, because oh. of the special needs. No, no, no. You, that's that you got to get over. Oh, like you're afraid to, to leave him with a babysitter because of he's mm-hmm. never been left with anybody. Well, and it, I think that for me, that also comes from like I got left with a lot of people and had like bad um, experiences. Mm-hmm. And so I am very cautious about who I'm willing to leave my kiddo with just because, you know, I don't want I don't want him to be harmed i guess or we're well, kind of you have, you have a camera like now right like that's a thing like, what was that is you can have like a, a nanny cam now you know you can have those things where you can monitor a remotely. harm monitor yeah you can have always you can monitor any kind of thing i mean honestly i'm not trying to uh, toss you got anything here i'm thinking well i'm not trying to like psychoanalyze here but i was your child so i can just speak from personal experience for me that my mother, uh, and and I'm not saying mother pointedly. I just was raised with a single mom, so my parent was um, was I wouldn't say r- responsible, but but her anxiety exacerbated the situation. Uh, that and and it was a cyclical kind of like dynamic, right? And 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 so I like just hearing you say that. Uh, I think that like part of the thing that needs to happen is is you guys finding a way to give yourselves permission to do what you guys know you need to do, Mm -hmm. which is find someone to give you a break. You deserve a break. You are, of course your trauma is, is real and significant and, and, and it informs the decisions that you make, but you don't have to hire someone on care.com, give them the keys to the house. And then you guys go uh, to San Francisco for the weekend and go to the Burning Man decompression party. It's obvious that you go to Burning <laughs> Man. Like you could go, you could hire someone to come and watch your child with you while the two of you are in the house for the night and you stay, the babysitter's in the house. That's and a you good guys, start. You, yeah. That's a start. You, yeah. you observe oh, the yeah. way that they interact with your child and then the next time you go out for an hour walk and then the next time you go out for the night and then finally you build up to getting a hotel room t- uh, together and you can spend the night and have a romantic evening. You can build it up, but the, the, the fact that you haven't done any of that makes me think like the anxiety is as big of an actor here as your child's actual special needs. Like the parents are, you're so anxious about those special needs. It's, it's the problem. N- not your your son's issues because every issue well, it's has compounded. a solution. It's compounded. Yeah. yeah. And also your son has two parents who care. Yeah. And that's, that's huge. pretty rare, honestly. Like it, it, at least when I was growing up, it was so many people with like a single parent and they're always like, they didn't really. <clears throat> smoking. Smoking indoors. Oh, they yeah. They would smoke. Classic. They left us in the car. <laughs> oh my God. They yeah. just left. They, they didn't even leave. know what ADD was. You know, yeah. My dad always had a beer in the car with us. So oh, really, yeah, sure. <laughs> no car seats. I was, seats. Yeah. <laughs> I, was uh, yeah, I was feral too. I mean, Johnny, were you a wild kid? You must oh, have been. I was in the woods. Anytime I could possibly be in the woods, I was in the woods. <laughs> Doing what the- by yourself? Just making traps, climbing trees. <laughs> Where are you from? Minnesota. Oh, yeah. you're from Minnesota. Yeah. I mean, I'm not. Listen, you guys have a complicated situation with your kid. And I don't know, obviously, no one here knows the actual answer to what his issues are. Nobody knew the answers to my issues either. I was ADD. I was medicated. I had a team. All this stuff. I oh, had- but you guys going out is a way of setting boundaries with him because you're showing. You're not just like saying things. You're actually doing it. And that will set a boundary. Just yep. like saying no sets a boundary. I, I, I was going to say, I have a feeling that that you guys doing what he wants because of your anxiety that if you're not there all the time he will fall into the abyss is not helping the issues go down i i have a feeling based on what i know that treat that him being the little prince that that rules the kingdom it Mm -hmm. i'm not i don't know what the actual solution is but i have a feeling that you know mom and dad need some alone time this person's going to be watching somebody that you trust and that you've built a relationship would actually probably be beneficial i don't know if i'm sure it wouldn't solve the problem but it'd probably be beneficial on some level i that's my feeling it would obviously be beneficial for your relationship you guys need to date you guys need to go on a date that's very that's very clear Mm -hmm. do you read parenting books 
Yeah. Parenting books, parenting Mm -hmm. podcasts, all the things. And I do really feel like it is important for us to have that relationship and to go out on dates to model like a healthy marriage relationship that, you know, you go out and you do things without your kid. I mean, he comes with us everywhere and it's great and we love it, but. But you don't love we, it. <laughs> I, mean, I do. I love it. I love it. And I, you know, I enjoy spending time with him. But yes, but, I would love for him to be not with us sometimes yeah. too, of course. Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah. yeah. He's, he a, comes- he's a farm he could go to. Well, I mean, like a, like a farm would be fun. If I was seven years, I want to go to a farm and just pet horses and stuff. I mean, I don't, I don't think, not to be prescriptive, I don't think Johnny's wrong that it sounds like your kid needs some like um, boy in the woods type shit. It's what it sounds like to me. It sounds like he needs some like outward bound. <laughs> but animals of, really are animals. Yeah, help kids out a ton. Like a, a classic, animals. like what a boy needs, like not to be overly reductive, but like it does seem like. So well, what a kid needs, really. It's like, you know. Yeah, but there I is mean, something to whole, feral boyness yeah. that yeah. needs to be like wood bound with a with a, 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 a stern guide on some. I do kind of believe yeah, that. Yeah, I think it's good. But I, I also want to say this. You guys are obviously great parents. It's like that anxiety of like, whether we make a decision then we'll become worse parents like that's off the table you're good parents you've dedicated your life to this kid you guys are so clearly great parents and you have other parts of you that aren't parent and you need to like water those plants like they 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 deserve to be watered too it's not just that it'll model a good relationship for him like that's just you saying that oh it'll be good for us to go on a date because it'll model good dating relationship for a kid forget him forget your kid He's not, he's not, he doesn't, you guys need to go fuck in a hotel, like, <laughs> you know? Or on a farm. Or on a far, on a horse. <laughs> Lady Godiva stuff. Farms are closer. The farms yeah. are closer. <laughs> yeah. I feel like we're kind of like too good of parents now. Yes. I, that's, what, that's, I think, what Everybody I'm Everybody is. It's crazy. It's I, too I think much. about like all the comedians I know, I'm like, how are you guys better parents than anyone I knew growing up? <laughs> like any, literally every parent I knew. Like, I know degenerate comedians who are the best, like, you'd like, like Brendan Walsh, they'll send me something like, this is the b- nicest thing I've ever, s- if my dad did that once, it would be like the greatest thing ever. He like every day draws a fucking drawing for it. I'm like, what are you, who are you? No, you're right. <laughs> but you're a fucking <laughs> comedian. We're all abused. We're, we were yeah. all abused. So we're so trying we're to reacting. break the generational trauma yeah. and be but better. But, so, but sometimes, I do think that sometimes we go so hard on trying to break the generational trauma that we go into this like little prince or a little princess for us situation where it's like this is I a Google today can you be too good of a parent or can you love your child too much <laughs> totally like I'm just like because I'm like we kiss her all the time we read to her whatever she wants and it's just like and she knows too like you know can you please say goodbye to me one more time one more time you know and it's just like it's just that indulging right and I, I know you're dealing with a very specific situation but I think, you know, just finding ways, finding books like I'm reading a book right now called Hunt, Gather, Parent. I'm really liking that. It's kind of talking about like how people have always treated their kids like hundreds of years ago, like when they were just in tribes. Like, what about that? Or another book we were reading, um, How to Not Raise an Asshole. Uh, Mm -hmm. That was helpful. And I'm just trying to say no to her more because my inclination is to give her everything she wants at every moment. And like you guys are not going to become like hard parents. That's just not who you. That's very obviously not who you are. So you don't have to worry about that. Like, oh, if I make these like two decisions to do to like leave, then I'll maybe I'll become like a callous. Pa- that's just that's not you. You're you guys are softies that love your kid. So make a couple of little decisions where you go. This is for us. Like I, I dropped my kid off at school yesterday. I told Moshe this. I was so embarrassed. I walked into her, her, you know, you just drop them off at the front, at the front of the classroom. I walked into the classroom and I was like, honey, um, I, I, I have your purple water bottle and this, this jeweled one, I put the water from this one into that one, but I cleaned it out and I'm just going to put it over. And she was like literally trying to play make believe with her kit, with her friend right (laughs) away. And I was like, so I just, I'm just putting it over here. Okay. And she was like, okay, mom. But I'm just like, what? It was like a compulsion. Like, why did I do that? It was so embarrassing. No, we didn't have water bottles. We were little, like in kindergarten. No one like brought us a water bottle with our name on it that we kept. It was just like, it's got to stop. I didn't drink water till I was 30. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Will you, Johnny? 
That's a very funny I point, Johnny, that you, you know I'm comedians who are the best parents. But all of them really are. Every, everyone I know who's a parent who's a comedian, they're all like exceptionally good parents. That's nice. In a way that I'm always impressed. And I think I think you guys got to commit to us now that you're going to get a babysitter and start the process. You don't have to do the thing that will make you freak out with anxiety and trauma. We you all have, have cell phones. Stand you, up and say it. But you start, stand up and say it right now. Say it. Say it to the Lord. You gotta do some. Say it right now. Say it right now. Tell the world. No, but I like the idea of the easing in. Say yeah, but are you gonna do that? I've never I want, thought of it too. Let commit it go. To, commit to that. Let it go. Okay. Let the kid <laughs> run out, be free. Well, because a date isn't just leaving for hours. A date can be going for a half hour walk together. A date can be anything that you decide mm-hmm. it can be, and you can build up. It People can, date in prison. People date in prison, <laughs> and we want to recommend to you prison dating. <laughs> well, listen, that's helpful. good luck. Yeah, I'm. It's good that he has so so much support, and just try to be just good enough. Yeah, that's what my therapist told me. You could be a good enough parent, and that's great. Yeah. my feeling is that you your you your child will actually be better served by having parents that think about things other than his needs 24 hours a day. My, that is my feeling that if you guys have a healthier personal life, maybe he'll start thinking he'll be able to take care of himself on some level, even if it's just psychically or so somehow m- metaphysically or something just by having the energy off of him. And you, yes, I totally, yeah. I, that's he needs what the I'm energy saying. off of him yep. a little bit. And, and also like jump into the abyss of, a weird lady who's going to come over and maybe be a little strict with him or yep. whatever she's going to yep. do. Do not get a clone of you. I, I'm telling you, I really think this. <laughs> Don't get a clone of you. Get like a weird old grandma who's like old school, not old school enough to hit him while you're gone, but just <laughs> before that. And, and you can you can put an ad on care.com and say what you're looking for and you might have to pay a little more, but it's like you can that's what we did during COVID. We interviewed like four nannies and found someone who like who's like perfect. And she's not like us. She's like an old school, traditional kind of like almost like German. a grandma. She's German and she's anti Semitic. <laughs> and we thought that would be good for our child to walk through that. But um yes, I think that that's that's that is that is what you need. That is what you All need. All right, just try to be a worse parent. Yeah, try to be worse. All right. Thank you. Thank you guys so Bye, much. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. Oh, and take his Adderall. Take his Adderall. That'd be fun. You get back to that party life. It's a really cool idea. When in Rome. Yeah. <laughs> see you guys. And go to. I'll see you at Burning Man this year. I yeah. hope. Bye. Okay. Bye. Thank you. After that call, Johnny is not going to have a kid. Well, they were sweet. I you know. know. They were sweet, and they and they were like stuck on this idea that if they look away from their kid for one second, he'll fall in, like you said, fall into the abyss. And like the truth is, you can create an abyss by by staring too hard at a kid. That's how I, I also always think felt. more and more that the whole nature versus nurture thing is not a lot of nature. I mean, it's not a lot of nurture. It's, you think it's really? I think just, it's mostly nature. Yeah. Well, the I think thing it really about is I think the thing nature. about nature a lot. It's the a thing lot. about nature is you have to like weave a basket of nurture to put the the nature into. Yeah. You know, like you can be nature this kid and be raised with love and boundaries and then turn into like an ADD, turn into a, a comedian. Totally. Right. Or you can be ignored and rejected and turn into a murderer. That that's for sure. the kind of for nurture sure. part. But I think some of that is like. I think a lot of our skills, things we're good at, and the yeah. way we react to certain things, it's just who we are, I and we're agree. always going to be that way. And some people just can't do certain things, and some people can't help but be good at certain things. Well, I'll tell you one thing. I work, I'm work. i a pretty hard worker in life, and I was not indulged. Yeah. Ever. I was well, that's very, probably why, isn't it? Or, I think so. Well, that's what I'm saying, but that's yeah. not nature. That's nurture. That's but the way I was raised. Your, neither of your parents were hard workers at all? They were, but they like demanded a lot from me, and there wasn't a lot of like... Oh, you're so great. Oh, you're right, so but that's that's what I'm saying. That's nature because your parents are hard workers, so you are the same. You're saying it's genetic that they're. I think most things the pe- way people are is genetic. I think we like. I I I I know this is not a revolutionary thought, but right. I think it's very obviously just a mixture. It's a mixture, but I think it's more. It's a higher presence of nature than it is nurture. Mm. It could be because it's all these studies they've done where they separate. Uh, twins some of those terrible studies but there's so many examples of people who were raised dramatically different and they end up having the same a lot of the same tastes a lot of the same reactions to things in life because it's just kind of you know you're who you are if you're like a if you're a snake you're a snake here's where i think you're wrong okay most sociopathic abusers 
right. were abused sociopathically as children. And, uh, and yeah. it does, it's not just by their genetic parents. But that's, we're talking about a very specific instance I'm of, just saying of abuse. You can create a monster. Right. You can't set someone's destiny. I agree with you. Right. But you can create a monster or you can give a person who was nature-wise predicated to go in a wrong direction a different path to go through like love yeah, and support. Yeah, but that's a pretty small example of population. Most people are not sociopathic monsters. I, I disagree. Mean, like, in gen- you think- <laughs> I disagree. I feel like I'm part sociopath mm-hmm. to some extent. Because like my dad is somewhat sociopathic. His uh, his dad was a sociopath. So was his dad. How does it let out in yeah, your life? Question. I think it just being like able to be severely emotionally detached if I want to. Be. Yeah, he just told us. He's yeah. like with his parents. Remember, he was like. Well, but that's also informed by a, a strange relationship. So it's easy to be like. I don't think it's informed by the relationship as much as it is just the genetic th- nature. Yeah. Well, things. detachment. I, yeah. I'm a, I'm capable of that too. Yeah. Emotional detachment. Mm-hmm. I don't think that I am. Yeah, I don't have that. I you get. Don't? I get really. I'm really worried about people and what they think and what they think of me. And well, you I can't get, just be like, oh, I'm just going to switch it off. No. Oh. No. I, I. 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 can cut a person out of my life, but yeah. I'll be. I'll be in anguish for years about it. Okay. And I will do it. Yeah. But I'll. St- uh, it'll bother me. Yeah. But yeah. I. I don't want. You know what I don't want to do? Who I don't want to cut out of my life? Me. It's you. Okay. <laughs> It's you. Good. And it's I, I feel the same way. Because I like you. I think you're smart, smart and funny. Oh, my God. And what That's is right. also smart and funny. Colossomy bag? Minnesota reggae colossomy bag. What about bag. you do an endorsement? Are these shoes by... <laughs> Minnesota... By I'm Jay excited Strong. to hear how, how reggae... Um, yeah. Do Everything you say else reggae? Because I'm from the Midwest and we said reggae, but it's reggae. I think I say... Re- I don't know how I, I say it now. I haven't thought of it. I say I reggae. Say, I say reggae. Reggae. Reggae is not right. Reggae? Reggae. No I one's say reggae. ever corrected me. No. Reggae. Reggae. How do you say cray, um, the, the Crayola thing? Crayola? Yeah, but the what is that? It's a... Crayon? Crayon, yeah. I don't say... Cr- how do the people... Some people say... Ask say, her. Crayon. Cr- yeah, crayon. I don't say that. But you're from... <laughs> cr- crayon. crayon. So when you hear somebody... When crayon. it's Ocean sp- Spray Crayon Raspberry, you crayon. think it's Ocean Spray Crayon Raspberry? All right. How about that website that you go to like sell a... a sell like a, a, a used dresser drawer? For cash to list, or you want to get rid of a bunch of stuff. Craigslist? There you go. How do you say it? How do you say it? <laughs> I say Craigslist too. Yeah. You want to say Craigslist? Yeah, no. Craigslist. Craigslist. Craig. What do you say? No, I say Craigslist. Do you say Craigslist? I say, I, I would, if someone said that's someone's name, I say Craig. Craig's, cra- really? Like, yeah, I say Craig. No, you don't. Yes, I do. I hate that I say it, but I say Craig. Craig? Craig. 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 <laughs> oh, I was just Craig. kidding that that's what I said. No, I say Craig. Craigslist. 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 That's fucked up. That is I fucked up. I know it's fucked up. That's I, wrong. Craigs- it's unethical. You know Craigslist. what it is, actually? Craigslist. You know what it is? What is it's it? It's sociopathic. It's sociopathic behavior. It's, it's, a cl- it's a classic sociopathic phenotype. If you're dating a man, ladies, if you're dating a man and he says Craigslist, run. Listen. Ladies, if you're dating a man and he knows what Craigslist is, <laughs> he's probably <laughs> too old to be dating. <laughs> Listen, Johnny, you're one of the funniest people I know. Uh, Do you have a podcast? I sort of have an interim one. I'm starting a new one. Okay. So I don't know. Yes. I, I hear you on Duncan's podcast a lot. I'm the ultimate guest. You guys have your own little shoot. You've been the ultimate guest oh, tonight. Shoot. That was the best. You're <laughs> so funny. Everyone needs to go see you uh, yeah, on see Valentine's me. weekend in Chicago. That yes. club is so, that theater I should say. Everyone loves so, it so much. So I'm awesome. excited. They give right, you a well, pen. Do you know about that? A pen? Like, like a place yes. to put uh, a no, bunch a, of pigs? No, they give you like a, 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 a fountain pen. Ooh. Like I a like really this. classy pen. Wow, it doesn't take pen. much to get you on the road. I just think that's classy. <laughs> no, I think it's classy. There they was give another you club. a pen. There was and a, there's other places no, where you could a, like <laughs> take the towels. And, uh, I just, they give you 14 <laughs> menus for the Alamo Draft House. No, they give you, I think it's classy. Remember that club we played in Cleveland and the guy would give you a custom made bat? It was like from the like Louisville Slugger Ooh. factory and it would have your name engraved That's on it. That's cool. I, I like people, people. Oh, that like, would be good to carry around South Africa. That's right. Yeah, because You're a little it's kind of conspicuous. Was here. Yeah. Yeah, monogrammed bath. You know what I carry around <laughs> South Africa now? What? It's friends. Aww. That's what you gotta have. Well, I would friends. love to go to South Africa. I want to go to South Africa. That sounds awesome. But well, I maybe don't you'll want, become but a I, movie star but, like Johnny. What I don't want to have happen to me in South Africa is, and it is dangerous because you're, parts you're, of it are dangerous. No, it's very dangerous, and you're almost you're in, at great risk of being devoured by a shark. Honey, your South African accent is bad. She's not. I'm devoured, not doing a South African accent. Devoured by a shark. 
I can't do it. I cannot do it. <laughs> Johnny right. Pemberton, ladies and gentlemen. That's me. Go see him. Find him. Love him. You I love being here. Johnny, we love Thank you. Thank you for coming. I love it. Bye-bye. Bye.